Okay, let's have a, a little lesson on this um, Brower piece. Um, this is Brower 18 number 11. So this one's a little bit trickier than the previous ones. Um, when they used to divide the book up into four parts, um, each book would be a little bit more difficult. Um, now it all comes in one book, which is really convenient and great. Um, it's, it's definitely a little bit of a challenging piece. I think the main thing that you want to do is um, you're going to have to practice it very slowly and just get certain things very clean. And I think it's partly right hand fingering is, is one of the most important things, maybe more than left hand fingering. Um, <clears throat> when you're starting off the piece, this stuff's fine. When you get to here, just make sure you really work out your right hand fingering. I. A, M, I, P, I, M, P, I, M, P, I, M. Then you start again. So you can see there, on, <clears throat> this is the last bar on the second line, I'm switching the two right away, or beforehand. So the three, four is normal. onto your second finger there and the reason I do that exact fingering is well I mean it's the most convenient but it's also you can leave it down for the next bar and so I'm just splicing in because the previous video cut out so let me just finish up the lesson here um, I think we we're on the third line and we were going over the right, we're just about to go over the right hand fingering for that particularly tricky passage. Um, the first time the passage happens is at the end of the first line. But that one's easy because it goes from an eighth note, sixteenth, sixteenth, eighth, sixteenth, sixteenth, eighth. So you have a little break after each eighth note to, to kind of recover. This one, not as much. So on the third line, That's, um, it's a little bit of a tricky passage, but it does work really well because it, it kind of glides through the phrase so you can get it sounding legato, but it's just easy to kind of slip up. So for right hand fingering, I'm doing thumb, thumb, I am, thumb, I am, I, A, M, I, M, thumb, I, am, and then you're back into the, the passage. Let me do that again. So just take it in small chunks. Um, I would just take care of that first and then and then add the final slur. You have to use the fourth finger there because the third finger is needed for So um, that's a pretty tricky passage, uh, but you'll get it. Just take it in small chunks and work it with the metronome. Uh, I think you'll be fine. The next section is a little bit odd because all the bass notes happen on off beats. So the counting in the next section is one and two and three and four and one and two and three. A lot of the time when you hear it, because the bass note is uh, the lowest note is on the off beat, it sometimes sounds like that note is the downbeat. Um, that's not actually the case. Um, it might end up sounding like that anyway, but I would train yourself to, to think of the M finger as the beat. Because you're going... Um, Getting used to that is a little bit odd, but um, just do it with the metronome and line up your M finger with the metronome beep and, uh, and you'll be fine. And just get used to it until you can like tap your foot and play that 
uh, as normal. And it's okay if it kind of sounds like... That's kind of how it's going to end up sounding motivically, but um, you want to make sure it's rhythmically correct so you can keep a pulse going. The next section is, is more legato, and um, it's, it's kind of neat um, because it slowly pieces itself together, so to speak. Um, in the recording, I left out the repeat, uh, but I'd recommend you do it, actually. sometimes when you have to do those slurs if you have small hands but um but it's pretty stable because you can hold on to notes the whole time just make sure you're tapping the beat there as well though one two and three and four and one and two and three and i recommend you just get used to counting just the quarter beats one two three by which I mean I should too. So, but just make sure you can maintain a beat there. So if you had the metronome on, whole piece. There's lots of different things you have to do with the right and left hands in this one, um, but just maintaining that pulse and trying to keep your playing clean is the important thing. It's a really tough piece to keep clean. Um, I, I was definitely having some trouble um, doing that, so uh, I look forward to continuing to work on the etude and clean it up a little bit. But maintaining the pulse is the big thing, and I think if you're maintaining your technique overall, if you're doing scales, arpeggios, and slurs, that's what this piece has. It has mainly like arpeggios and slurs, so with some slides as well and shifts, so you can get that from your scales. Um, and like clear position playing as well. So just keep all that thing, those things in mind and make sure you're always keeping a practice, uh, a technique routine going with those things in it, because this one um, will require that you just up your, up your technique level a little bit. And of course it can be played a lot slower. It sounds nice at slower speeds too. speeds a lot of people play it quite, quite quickly but um, like I said the only thing is that the the second section if you play the piece slowly then the second section is pretty slow and I think it's supposed to be in the same tempo pretty much so it kind of says legato and in tempo, uh, so um, you you want to consider that when you're when you're piecing the piece together that you're gonna to have to raise the speed up enough that that second section um, sounds okay. So just keep that in mind. Thanks. <laughs>